But one thing's interesting here, it's the sign of the answer. The fact that we got a positive number. So if you think about it, the lengths are always positive. So the sign of the dot product is the same as the sign of cosine theta. So in fact, the sign of a dot b is going to be positive if the angle is less than 90 degrees. So that means geometrically, my two vectors are going more or less in the same direction. They make an acute angle. It's going to be zero if the angle is exactly 90 degrees. Okay? Because that's when the cosine will be zero. And it will be negative if the angle is more than 90 degrees. So that means they go rather in opposite directions. Okay, so that's basically one way to think about what dot product measures. It measures how much the two vectors are going along each other. Okay. And that actually leads us to the next application. So let's see, did I have a number one there? Yes, so if I had a number one, I must have a number two. The second application is to detect orthogonality. It's to figure out when two things are perpendicular. Okay, so orthogonality is just a complicated word from Greek to say things are perpendicular. So let's just take an example. Let's say I give you the equation x plus 2y plus 3z equals 0. Okay? So that defines a certain number, a certain set of points in space. And what do you think the set of solutions looks like if I give you this equation? So far I see one, two, three answers. Okay? So I see various competing answers, but yeah, I see a lot of people voting for answer number four. Uh, I see also some I don't knows and some other things, but uh, the majority vote seems to be a plane, and indeed that's the correct answer. So how do we see that it's a plane? say this is the equation of a plane. So there's many ways to see that, and I'm not going to give you all of them, but here's one way to think about it. So let's think geometrically about how to express this condition in terms of vectors. So let's say, let's take the origin, you know, O by convention is the point zero, zero, zero. And let's take a point P that will satisfy this equation or not. So at coordinates x, y, z. So what does this condition here mean? Well, it means the following thing. So let's take the vector OP. Okay, so vector OP, of course, has components x, y, z. Now, we can think of this as actually a dot product between OP and a mysterious vector that will remain mysterious for very long, namely the vector 1, 2, 3. Okay, so this condition is the same as OP dot A equals 0. Right? If I take the dot product OP dot A, I get X times 1 plus Y times 2 plus Z times 3. But now, what does it mean that the dot product between OP and A is zero? Well, it means that OP and A are perpendicular. Okay? So I have this vector A. I'm not going to bother to draw it realistically. Let's say it goes, for example, this way. Then a point P solves this equation exactly when the vector from O to P is perpendicular to A. 
and I claim that defines a plane. For example, you know, if it helps you to see it, take a vertical vector. What does it mean to be perpendicular to the vertical vector? It means you're horizontal. It's the horizontal plane. Here it's a plane that passes through the origin and is perpendicular to this vector A. Okay, so what we get is plane through the origin perpendicular to this guy A. And in general, what you should remember is that two vectors have a dot product equal to zero if and only if that's equivalent to cosine of the angle between them is zero. That means the angle is 90 degrees. That means A and B are perpendicular. So we have a very fast way of checking whether two vectors are perpendicular. Okay, so one additional application, I think we'll see that actually tomorrow, is to find the components of a vector along a certain direction. So I claim we can use this intuition I gave about dot product telling us how much two vectors go in the same direction to actually give a precise meaning to the notion of component of a vector, not just along the x, y, or z axis, but along any direction in space. So I think I should probably stop here. Uh, but I will see you tomorrow at 2 here. And we'll learn more about that and about cross-product.